Hello, my friends, this is Jim Das Selvas, again bringing you another episode of this vibrant and fantastic game that is Advanced Squad Leader. This time, Jim will be a little more ambitious and will start producing a video that is actually the merge of two maps of Advanced Squad Leader called Streets of Stalingrad. In this map, which basically takes place in an urban terrain, we are going to bring the dispute between the Soviets and the Germans in October 1942. This map is the junction of two scenarios, one of which Jim has already made a series for, which is the Tractor Works, which is integrated with the guard's counterattack, to form the scenario in question. As a visual resource, we will use the tabletop simulator application downloaded from Steam, which allows a more playful view of events. To start the game, two dice are rolled, the white one representing the Germans, and the red one representing the Soviets. The faction with the highest result starts the game, and in this case, the Germans will start the match. Before starting the dispute, let's try to observe a little better the arrangement of the units on the board. On the left flank it is possible to observe a huge Soviet stack in the G3 building, where due to the concentration of units, which are accompanied by a leader 10-2, and we can infer that from there a maneuver called human wave can be launched, which requires the presence of a leader and at least an average of two infantry units and three contiguous hexes. In human wave, these units will get a total of eight movement factors in the movement phase, which is double what units normally get. In addition, these units will get a one boost to their morale, which will make breaking morale much more difficult. The initial German tactic in this sector in the prep fire phase will be to try to block this activity with fire on the Soviet units in the sector to try to prevent this maneuver from taking place. In the most central region of the map, the Germans will try to fire on the hostile forces within range, with special emphasis on the unit carrying the medium machine gun accompanied by the leader 9-2 in Hex J2. Towards the right flank of the German attack there is an island of German forces amidst a sea of Soviet units. In this sector, a priority will be to try to hit a large enemy stack in the X2 factory, giving up the advantage of the so-called concealment that guarantees enormous protection by reducing all firepower from the opponent to half. Finally, on the extreme right, the Germans concentrate many elite forces, carrying flamethrowers and demolition charges, in addition to the presence of powerful leaders with minus two and minus three factors. In the prep fire phase, a portion of these forces will be used to suppress Soviet units, with the aim of breaking morale or, at least, stripping these forces of concealment counters, which will allow for an easier reduction of hostile units in subsequent phases. All right, without further ado, let's proceed to the battle. Dice are rolled to see who will start the match, two for the Soviets and four for the Germans, so the start will be German. As stipulated, the Germans launch an attack with eight firepower, the light machine gun is not included, against the enemy units in G4, with the plus three modifier for the protection of the stone house. Double three, which implies cowering, and the attack will be evaluated in the six firepower column, with another three relative to the stone house results in a loss, and the Soviet sniper can be activated through the result of one or two on the roll of one given, sniper activation number is six. Five and the Soviet sniper was not activated. Units next to leader 80 launch an attack with 12 firepower plus three on Soviet units in G4. 
6 plus 3 equals 9 which is a normal morale check in the 12 firepower column. Eight, and the first Soviet unit is pinned. Six, and the second unit passes, but there may be a possible activation of the German sniper. Ten and the third unit has its morale broken. Let's check if the German sniper will be activated. Two, and the minus sniper is activated. Now let's roll the dice to check the direction, white dice, and distance, red dice, to find the coordinate of the sniper attack. Let's follow the direction four by five hexes and from there attack the nearest Soviet unit. The unit to be attacked is in the F6 hex, and since the sniper minus has been activated, one of the Soviet squads will become pinned. At this moment the Soviets are evaluating the possibility of carrying out a sniper check. Every time there is an attack carried out by the snipers, the defender always has the possibility of trying to find and attack the sniper, needing a result of 3 or less with the roll of 2 dice. However, on the other hand, these units will become temporarily immobilized, unable to perform other tasks such as defensive fire, and the Soviets choose not to perform the sniper check. Continuing the German strategy, stacking with the leader 9-2 will perform a 16 firepower attack at 5 hexes distance on the stacking with the enemy's medium machine gun, minus 2 for the leader minus 2, plus 3 for the stone house, with a final modifier of plus 1. Eight plus one equals nine, one morale check. Five plus one equals six and the leader checks. Nine plus one from the one morale check, minus one from the Soviet leader equals nine, and the Soviet squadron has its morale broken. The German stack with the 8-1 leader performs a machine gun attack of 16 firepower against the Soviets in M5, plus 2 for the Stonehouse, minus 1 for the 8-1 leader. Seven plus two equals nine which is one morale check, and the medium machine gun maintains rate of fire. Seven plus one equals eight, and this Soviet squad should have its morale broken, but Jim is wrong and just considers it pinned. Duplo two, and the so-called heat of battle is activated, in which, under the intensity of the fight, some units can stand out positively or negatively. To determine the result of the heat of battle two dice are rolled, and the result added to the modifier, for the Soviets it is plus two, determines what will happen to this unit.
8 plus 2 equals 10 and this unit becomes berserk, which determines that in its movement phase it will try to attack the nearest visible German unit, trying to enter close combat, counting for this with 8 movement factors and with a morale of 10. 8 plus 1 equals 9 and the third hostile unit has its morale broken. So far the Germans' plan has been reasonably successful. The Germans stack with the leader 8-1 and the heavy machine gun launch an attack against the lone Soviet unit at P8, with 8 firepower plus 3 for the Stonehouse, minus 1 for the leader. Double 3 plus 2 equals 8 which is a normal moral check, a possible activation of the Soviet sniper and the machine gun maintains the rate of fire. Eight, and the Soviet squadron breaks, and the Germans choose not to fire again as there is always the risk of the machine gun malfunctioning if the dice result is 12. Jim does not attempt the sniper activation that the Soviets would be entitled to. We are now going to move to the right flank to carry out the most important operation, which is the attack against the Soviet units at the X3 factory. The first unit to fire is the unit with the medium machine gun next to the 10-3 liter. With a total of 6 firepower and 0 modifier due to the sum of plus 3 for the Stonehouse minus 3 for the German leader. Double 3 which would be a 1 morale check in the 6 firepower column, but Jim analyzed the result in the 12 firepower column, which is equivalent to a 2 morale check as he did not consider the implicit modifier in the counter-concealment that reduces German fire by half. In addition we have the possible activation of the Soviet sniper. 9 plus 1 equals 10 and the Soviet squadron breaks. And, in yet another fantastic result for the Germans, the enemy's second squadron also breaks. The next attack is carried out by the German stack with the leader 10-2 and the heavy machine gun, with 6 firepower plus 1 as a modifier. Seven plus one equals eight and again Jim disregards the concealment and performs the analysis as 12 firepower, which generates one morale check. Eight plus one equals nine and the first squad has its morale broken. With the same result of eight Jim considers the second squad is pinned, go figure. The roll of one die is performed to check for the activation of the Soviet sniper, which does not occur. The heavy machine gun has maintained the rate of fire and launches an attack of 6 firepower plus 1. 6 plus 1 equals 7 which corresponds to normal morale check, possible activation of enemy sniper and machine gun loses rate of fire. The pin squad passes the test and at 8 the squad with broken morale remains the same as it cannot become pinned. 
Just to remind you, all units in the X3 factory have the quality of fanaticism, and with this their morale is increased by one. With one as a result, the Soviet major sniper is activated, and let's check in which coordinate he will carry out his attack. Jim uses the red die as the direction determinant, 1, and the white die as the distance determinant. The target to be attacked by the larger sniper is found in Hex T2, which contains three German units, for which we make a random choice to know which unit will be attacked. Here Jim makes another mistake, as he does not choose the unit corresponding to the highest value result and applies the result to one of the units whose result was 1, which has its morale broken, and rolls a die again to see if the second unit with the result of 1 to see if she will also suffer the sniper's attack. Fortunately, this unit was unaffected, and no damage was done. A flamethrower attack is performed on units at Y3, with 12 unmodified firepower. Nine, and it's normal morale check. At 10 the first squad has its morale broken and the second squad passes. The second flamethrower launches an attack against the enemy stack at Y5, with 12 unmodified firepower. Six which is a two morale check and possible Soviet sniper activation. Seven plus two equals nine, and the Soviet squadron has its morale broken. And the other squadron passes the test, and once again Jim forgets to try to activate the Soviet sniper unit. The German stack next to the 9-1 leader makes a shot against X5, with 12 firepower due to concealment, plus 2 as a modifier. Again Jim does not consider the concealment of the Soviet units, and instead of a pin test check, we will have one morale check. and as a consequence of this error one of the Soviet units has broken morale. Jim remembers that there was a Soviet sniper whose activation attempt was pending, and manages to activate a smaller sniper that makes a German unit T7 pinned.
The German stacking concealed with the 9-2 liter gives up the counter conceal and performs an 8 firepower plus 1 attack against the Soviet stacking at X3, again ignoring the Soviet concealment, which would reduce the shot to 4 firepower. Fortunately the Soviet units don't suffer any abuse on the dice roll of 8 and the machine gun loses its rate of fire. Movement phase and the most exposed German units look to improve their positions. On the right flank, the German units will start their movement towards the factory objective, and for this they will make use of a very important resource, which is the smokescreen, for which the engineer units have a high activation coefficient, with three or less on a die can cast the smokescreen one hex away, using two movement factor. On a result of two, the German unit throws a smokescreen to impair the vision of the Soviet pinned unit, which is still able to fire on German squadrons as they cross the street toward the factory. This same unit that placed the smokescreen advances to the hex ahead where it will suffer an attack from the Soviet pin squadron with half its firepower, that is 2, plus 2 for the smokescreen, minus 1 for the non-assault movement. Five plus one equals six, which is a pin test check, which with seven is a miss. Normally a marker with one residual fire would be placed, which does not happen due to the presence of smoke. The mid-squad carrying the demolition charge moves in assault movement to the hex with smoke and suffers an attack of 4 firepower, half to 2, for being subsequent first fire, reduced to 1 for the fact that the squad is meeting pinned, and doubled to 2 for being a point-blank shot. Therefore a shot of 2 firepower plus 2 for smoke. 2 plus 2 equals 4 which is 1 morale check in the 2 firepower column. With the new release of Snake Eyes, this squadron maintains its morale and the heat of battle is activated, where the dice will be launched to verify the effect, with a minus one modifier due to the fact that this unit is an elite unit. Eleven minus one equals ten and this unit becomes berserk and advances against the Soviet unit to enter close combat.
In this hex, it suffers an attack carried out by the pin squadron, with a final protective fire of 1 tripled to 3 due to the fact that the shot occurs from the same hex. Five, which is normal morale check. Seven in the German half squad passes. A new attack is carried out by a squad carrying a medium machine gun, with 8 firepower, increased to 16 for being at close range, plus 1 for firing inside the factory. This attack will not use the leader's modifier. For plus 1 equals 5 which is 3 morale check, which Jim interprets as K-3, which implies the immediate elimination of the Berserk mid-squad. A squadron of engineers charges towards the enemy pin squadron, taking a final protective fire with 2 firepower plus 2 for smoke. For plus 2 equals 6 which is a pin test check. with the launch of 8 and the German squadron becomes pinned. Another squadron of engineers tries to activate the smoke, without success, and even so advances one hex towards the enemy, suffering an attack of 8 firepower minus 2 for non-assault movement and movement in open terrain. Six minus two equals four which is a two morale check, and the German sniper can be activated. Eleven plus two equals thirteen, and this squadron has its morale broken and as this occurred above the ELR, this unit has its quality reduced. A counter of four residual fire is placed on the attacked hex. Another squadron of engineers manages to lay down a smokescreen and uses the remaining two movement factors by advancing towards the enemy, where he suffers a four firepower attack, plus two for the smoke minus one for the non-assault movement. Ten, which is a loss, and the Soviet squadron will attempt a final protective fire. Six plus one equals seven which is a pin test check.
which the unit passes. The same unit insists on one more shot of final protective fire. With 7 plus 1 equals 8, which is a miss and a counter 1 residual fire is placed on the hex. Jim throws a die and activates the smaller sniper. who will attack the J2 Hex and the leader who is there, suffers a wound, which reduces his movement factors to 3. A die is rolled to assess the severity of the wound, equals 5 wound is lethal. The German mid-squad starts crossing the street and is attacked by one residual fire. Seven, which is a miss. The Soviet squadron in adjacent hex attempts a new final protective fire. Eleven is a loss, and the Soviet squadron has its morale broken. With the fall of the last defensive bastion, the German units that can move towards the factory objective. Defensive fire phase, and the Soviet stack in G4 will build a fire group and fire a 24 plus 3 firepower on the American unit in G6. Prior to this, an organization is performed on the map with the removal of residual fire counters. Eleven plus three equals fourteen, which is a loss. The Soviets will launch a devastating attack, now with 12 firepower, Soviet units are firing beyond the optimal range of their weapons, minus 2 for the leader, plus 3 for the stone house, so 12 plus 1. And again Jim makes a colossal mistake against the Germans and analyzes the shot in the column of 16 firepower. The result of which is K-4, that is, this squadron will become a half-squadron and will suffer a 4 morale check.
11 plus 4 equals 15 and, as this unit has broken above the ELR, it has its quality reduced to second class and has its morale broken. Soviet stacking with leader 9-2 in the factory makes an attack against stacking with German leader 9-2. There will be 16 firepower plus 1 as a modifier. Seven plus one equals eight which is one morale check, and the heavy machine gun maintains the rate of fire. The leader passes with a result of three, plus one equals four, and assists the German squadron in its morale check by adding his modifier, and the squadron passes. As the heavy machine gun maintained the rate of fire and launches an attack against the same units with 6 firepower plus 1. 9 plus 1 equals 10 which is a miss. Next attack will be with the Soviet stack accompanied by the leader 9-1, with 12 firepower plus 2 as a modifier. Ten plus two equals twelve, which is a miss. The next attack will be with a fire group of 6 squads with a massive 30 firepower plus 3 as a modifier. 6 plus 3 equals 9 which is a 2 morale check. Seven plus two equals nine, and this unit, which already found its morale broken, suffers a reduction and becomes a half squad. The next group to fire is a mega fire group that will fire at the German units located at the top of the U3 hex. With 8 firepower, which was originally 34, reduced to 17 firepower by the distance to the target, reduced again to 8.5, so 8 firepower, due to counter concealment. Nine plus three equals 12, which is a miss, which Jim misses and considers a morale check, and which causes the German squadron to break morale. The Soviets choose not to fire again, and we move on to the advancing fire phase, a phase in which German units with intact morale and who haven't fired yet, can fire with half their firepower.
The Germans think of doing a shot of 11 firepower, half for being an advancing fire phase, doubled to 11 for being a point-blank shot, so with 8 firepower plus 3, but on second thought, they choose not to do it for the second time. Risk of activating the Soviet sniper. and we go to the route phase, in which the units under the DM counter and that are in hex adjacent to enemy units in good order, must move away and seek the protection of the nearest building or forest in terms of movement factors. In this route phase a new deception, where at least one of the German units that has vision on the enemy, approaches Soviet units in good order in the factory, which is not allowed. In the factory, with the excess of broken Soviet units, there is a difficulty in moving in order to avoid the limit of units per hex, which is three equivalent squadrons. Advance phase, phase in which German units with full morale and not pinned can advance one hex, and this is diligently done. The highlight of this phase on the right flank is the invasion of the factory by German units. 
On the left flank the highlight is the deployment of German units under the 9-2 leader to support the German units in the house at F5. Close combat phase, since there are no units in close combat, let's move on to the rally phase of the Soviet phase of this first round, ending the German phase. During this turn, Jim, among other mistakes, clearly hurt the Soviets by not considering concealment protection on units attacked in the factory. With that said, let's close this episode, not without first thanking the audience. Namaste.